Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Wednesday, June 21st, 2017, and you're tuned in to episode 273 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. Our top story of the day is an update on the situation in Nevada, where yesterday a judge extended a temporary order for the state to cease issuing marijuana distribution licenses to be used as the state seeks to start early adult use sales via medical marijuana shops on July 1st. The original temporary order to shut down issuing licenses was brought about by a group of state liquor distributors upset over other types of businesses distributing marijuana during the early opening phase even though they have a legislatively mandated 18-month monopoly on doing just that. Yesterday, Carson City District Judge James Wilson ruled in favor of the liquor distributors, noting that the ballot initiative passed by voters in the fall was clear on the matter of who will distribute marijuana. As the day closed out yesterday, a spokeswoman for the Nevada Department of Taxation said that the state intends to work towards hitting that July 1st deadline, but that right now they still have yet to certify any liquor distributors fighting for a seat at the cannabis table. We certainly will be following this one as it progresses. Yesterday, the state of Pennsylvania announced the winners of its first 12 issued medical marijuana cultivation licenses. The winners were issued from a pool of 177 applicants who were ranked by a group of anonymous judges according to a points-based scoring rubric. The 12 applicants selected will move on to the next round of the process, a six-month period during which they will need to demonstrate their full operational capabilities. Once that's done, they'll be given the green light to put seed to soil, or hydroponic medium, however their growing stock choices fall. The state will announce the winners of the first round of dispensary licenses, of which there are 27 up for grabs, sometime next week. Marijuana Business Daily is reporting that marijuana software company MJ Freeway has been hit with yet another online security breach, this time with an older copy of their application source code being made available publicly on the internet for a number of days. You should remember MJ Freeway for the industry-wide disruptions caused by a loss of customer data on the part of MJ Freeway towards the beginning of the year, leaving hundreds of MJ Freeway dispensary customers unable to process sales and inventory. It was an enormous mess for the company, though to their credit, they've since done a nice job of rebounding, raising additional capital and signing some pretty big deals. This latest data loss involves a copy of their source code from a previous version of their popular point of sales software that was put online on the website gitlab.com and linked to from Reddit for up to four days. Jeanette Ward, MJ Freeway's director of data and marketing, said that the company considers this latest incident to be a theft, saying that they reported the whole thing to the Colorado Bureau of Investigation. This is a good story to click over for the full read. As always, we have all the news we cover linked to on our website at mjtodaydaily.com and on our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz on the headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, MJ Today Media, publishers of this podcast, our weekly show, Marijuana Today, and the MJ Today Media Newsfeed email newsletter, the best source around when it comes to getting all the headlines of the day. Here's why it makes sense to spend your marketing dollars with us. Our listeners are incredibly engaged and trust us to give them the straight word about what's going on in the industry. We see that trust and engagement translate to numbers in the form of the average amount of time you listen to our shows and the open and click-through rates of our emails, all of which are hugely above industry average. In fact, the open rate for our emails is three times industry average, while our click-through rate is a healthy 1,000% industry average. Put that trust and engagement to work for your marijuana business, product, or service today by starting with an email to advertising at mjtodaydaily.com. That's advertising at mjtodaydaily.com. All right, time for the Blitz. Yesterday, the New York State Senate approved a proposed bill that adds PTSD to their list of medical marijuana qualifying conditions. The bill, which has already cleared the state assembly, passed out of the Senate by a vote of 50 to 13 and now heads to the desk of Governor Mario Cuomo. It's not exactly clear how the governor will land on this one, so we'll report back as things resolve. The Colorado Supreme Court decided this week to pass up a case involving a special tax imposed on adult-use marijuana sales by Adams County. Regular listeners might remember this story from last year, which involved a large bucket of tax money collected on adult-use marijuana sales by Adams County that was subsequently ruled to be illegal. 
Adams County was eventually sued by three cities within its borders who objected to the special tax targeting adult use marijuana. Eventually, the court found in favor of the three cities, even though the state eventually got around to passing a law allowing for marijuana to be hit with special taxes. The latest decision by the state Supreme Court denied the appeal by Adams County of that ruling. This is another good one to click over for the full read if you're into marijuana tax policy. Activists in Massachusetts are warning that the latest proposed version of the state's adult use marijuana law will weaken efforts to increase the racial diversity of the industry. A bit of disclosure here, one of the main actors of this story, lawyer and activist Shaleen Title, is a regular on our weekly podcast Marijuana Today and a friend of mine. The activist group Equitable Opportunities Now said that it was profoundly troubled by the current incarnation of the law. Shaleen told the Associated Press, quote, Under this bill, not only are people with felonies excluded from cannabis employment, anyone can be rejected from a license or have a license revoked for any conviction, including a traffic ticket. Such overbroad and vague restrictions perpetuate the discrimination associated with marijuana prohibition, contrary to what the voters passed. Marijuana.com is a good story up about the so called mega farms under construction in Canada that will soon start pumping out thousands and thousands of pounds of high quality cannabis on a daily basis. This is something I've reported on extensively in the past, as hardly a week goes by that we don't hear about some new groundbreaking ceremony for an enormous high-technology cultivation center somewhere north of the border. These enormous grow facilities are going to be hard to compete against once international restrictions on marijuana trade start to fall away. Turning out west to California, we find the legal marijuana industry and the state working to figure out the best way to regulate marijuana in terms of cultivation and contamination. During a public hearing held last week in San Jose, a number of industry experts stepped up to the mic to make recommendations for how to best handle testing cannabis for safety. This is a big, complicated story best clicked over to. Sticking in California for a headline, we have state lawmakers including a marijuana payments bill within a larger $125 billion budget bill passed last week. The so-called Cannabis Safe Payments Act will allow licensed marijuana businesses to make tax payments at any of the 22 State Board of Equalization offices, while also allowing counties to set up systems to pay those same taxes at county offices. Our final story of the day is a touch on the older side, with Vice President Mike Pence making a series of comments late last week at the Conference on Prosperity and Security in Central America, in which he said that the United States planned to step up their use of, quote, war on drugs tactics, unquote, to stop the flow of immigrants and illegal drugs. Vice President Pence, who recently hired a lawyer to help him out with that whole collusion with the Russians thing, said in his address, quote, President Trump has already taken decisive action to protect the American people from the harshest consequences of illegal immigration and the transnational drug trade. To further stem the flow of illegal immigration and illegal drugs into the United States, President Trump knows, as do you all, that we must confront these problems at their source. We must meet them and we must solve them in Central and South America. Unquote. Yep, because that's worked in the past. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again tomorrow morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily and visit our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. Thanks to our sponsor, MJ Today Media, and to all of our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the illustrious ranks of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Shay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.